the Battle of Adwa, 1896. Preceding Adwa. Remember this, the Europeans carved up our homes with bloodthirst, not because we were the third world, but because we were the first, because we held gold in our hearts, because we had diamond for eyes, because oil ran through our veins and a blessing hung in our skies. Remember that when they scrambled in the conference in Berlin and callously carved Africa, searing each African skin, it was not just because of their greed or need to sow seeds saturated with sorrow, but because through Africa's greatness they envisioned their own great tomorrow. The beginning. Barriatari, the Italian general, had ice instead of eyes and a tongue of five leather whips. Ras Alula was deafened by the whisper of lies that seeped from his lips. Through Alula's agents who could read the tone of Ethiopian winds, their whisper, we will catch the Italian advance before the advance begins. And with the anger that of lions and a swiftness of eagle's wings, Alula rose magnificent and rode to the foot of Menelik the king. With all their five generals, Menelik growled, five armies and damned attacks. It will take one strong Ethiopia to break their stiffened backs. Meantime, with pomp and primitive greed, the Italians embarked on their plan. They left for Adwa from Entisco with night time a shroud for each man. Unbeknown, every step was recorded by Alula's silent, speedy spies who traced the battalion's movement through the reflections they left in the sky. The Italians, noting the Ethiopian dawn as a cloak for a surprise attack, had no knowledge that warriors were waiting and would give the surprise back. With all their five generals, Rasalula whispered, their armies and planned attacks. It will take one strong Ethiopia to break their brittle backs. The war. The Ethiopians advanced from below, a hero's sacrifice for a country's love. Suffice as they fell and blood spilled for another flank to rain from above. And so unveiled complex manoeuvres of hope and honour for history, whose aim was the breaking of evil and the waking of victory. The Ethiopians from all provinces gathered with truth as protection, descended around Adwa with justice and honour and unity as their weapon. The cracking, snapping of rattling rifles awoke the morning sun. From the ridges the Italians poured fire, the Battle of Adwa begun. With all their five generals, Ras Mangisha fought. With their armies and their attacks, it will take one strong Ethiopia to snap their stiffened backs. The victory. It seemed the more Ethiopians were killed, then twice as many returned. The more they tried to drench their spirits, the more the spirits burned. It seemed as if amongst the red mist, each man that fell wounded rose again. Each breath of air rejuvenated his lungs. Each drop of blood seeped back to his veins. It seemed that the Ethiopians rose from the riverbeds, came from the shadows of mountain sides with eyes of stone and dread, and Barriatari's generals, sensing the beginning of the end, succumbed to the deafening whisper, Surrender! 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 Remember this, it was not one of Ethiopia, but Ethiopia as one. It was not part of the sum that won, but part of every one. It was not the heart on its own, but its veins that pumped on. It was not just the warriors, but where they were all from. Remember this, how the story washed across the continent, enslaved, flooded with the story of Adwa in a whispered tidal wave, from Kenya to Senegal, from Morocco 
to Gambia. The liberation began in Adwa in 1896 and ended in South Africa.